Assalamu ala Mustafa al Amin. Uh, good afternoon, dear students. So, through this session, we are going to see how to write the literature review after uh, we have seen how to write, of course, the general introduction, the general conclusion, the introductions and conclusions of the different, the three chapters, in addition to. Uh, here the abstract and how to write the different types of abstract. Of course, writing the literature review seems the uh, the most difficult step in writing a dissertation. So throughout this video, we're going to see how to write the literature review through effective steps, different types of literature reviews, and how to write them, and different techniques. Uh, since uh, here writing the literature review is not written uh, in a random way, but there are effective strategies and approaches to follow to write the literature review. So before uh, here giving an overview about what is meant by literature review, let us see what is not regarded as a literature review. For example, uh, an annotated bibliography, a list of unrelated references and arguments and arguments about the importance of your research. So before explaining what is meant by an annotated bibliography, let us check what is meant by a literature review. So if we read this definition, we can say that a literature review is an objective, concise and critical summary of published literature relevant to the topic and the investigation and the synthesis of past and present research. So what is in bold is important in writing the literature review. So according to many uh, here scholars and researchers, the literature review is what a systematic examination of the scholarly literature about one's topic. Why it is systematic? Since you are going to write in an objective way, concise way and critical, providing critical summary and reinforcing your critical summary by a synthesis of past and present course research works. So it is critically analyzes, evaluates and synthesizes research findings, theories and practices by scholars and researchers that are related to an area of focus. So in reviewing the literature, the student or the researcher should what? Should present a comprehensive, critical and accurate understanding of the current state of knowledge. He is that using techniques like comparing, contrasting, criticizing and what? Synthesizing different research studies and theories. For what reason? To reveal the research gap existing in, uh, of course, the provided or the can literature and indicate what needs to be done to advance what is already known as the topic about the topic of choice. But at the same time, you should be open to acknowledging the value of different approaches. It means that you are going to compare, you are going to contrast, you are going to provide a synthesis, but you should give a value or you acknowledge the value of the different approaches and perspectives. Compare, as I said, compare and contrast different positions and present the pros and cons of each. Why? For what reason? To show that there is uh, in here a gap in research and you are going to find solutions for that gap in research. So, according to Bhutan, Bay 2005 in the Chile view, shouldn't simply mirror the current research in the field. Instead, it should aim to present the current knowledge through a fresh and creative perspective that contributes to a new thinking and understanding of the topic being investigated. It means that you are going to focus on critical summary and synthesis. You are going to use the techniques like comparing, contrasting, and showing the value of the existing knowledge. So after providing uh, such a definition and knowing what is meant by a literature review, 
So literature review is not written in a random way or just citing what scholars have provided uh, about a given uh, topic or citing the historical development of a given field of research, but it is what the, the collection, the sum of your readings, the sum of your readings in which you show your argument, this argument is supported by the views of scholars and writing this in an objective, concise manner using critical thinking and synthesizing past and present research. Let us return to what is uh, known as an annotated bibliography. So the main difference between annotated bibliography and the literature review, so an annotated bibliography where you summarize and describe individual sources on your topic. So you summarize and you describe. That's all. So this is called annotated bibliography. You summarize and describe existing uh, knowledge of previous scholarship and this is what most of our uh, students do. It means that they are just summarizing what is existing as knowledge in research in a given field of research. So literature review is what is a synthesis. It synthesizes sources that lead to particular themes and guiding concepts. So the main difference between an annotated bibliography and literature review is according to Alexor and Cooper, 2012, similar to the difference between, for example, if we take a, a picture, pictures, and pictures used in movies. So a movie contains still pictures, but in, it connects them into a meaningful storyline. It means that a movie is a set of what well, a set of pictures which are connected to create a story. So this is similar to uh, here uh, creating a literature review. You take from different sources. You summarize, of course. You can describe, but you can uh, here uh, and you should focus on synthesizing. You should use your th critical thinking in uh, organizing these references. Let us now move on. So before that, so a literature review is not a presentation. What you can say, literature review is not a presentation of your own ideas or arguments or assumptions. But rather, your claims should be based on studies conducted by researchers or theories, but forward by authoritative scholars. So, of course, you present what? You present ideas, arguments, exceptions. Well, these ideas and arguments should be supported by previous scholarships, uh, previous researchers, theories, approaches in that field that you are investigating. So, that to support your ideas and your arguments or your exceptions in that field of research. Let us now move on to. Uh, purpose of the literature review. So as you can see here in this slide, the main or the first purpose of the literature review is to evaluate the context of scholarly material for its contribution to the understanding of uh, the research thesis being studied. It also explains the relationship between each of the works and their deliberation. It identifies gaps in previous research. So this is the main aim. You present pre uh, uh, here existing knowledge in the field. For what reason? To show the reader that there is a literary gap that I should find what solutions for this literary gap. Defining new ways to interpret research within a discipline address conflicts found in contro uh, 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 contradictory research previously conducted and identifying the need for additional research. So through your research, you are going to show to the reader that we should what, uh, provide additional research. So following Anavich and Regan 2017 uh, new study, we divided the purpose of uh, writing the literature review into three major categories, which are 
As for those, we've got purposes that set the context for the study, purposes that inform the research design and methodology, and purposes that identify areas for advancing scholarship in the field. So let us start with what is called purposes that set the context for the study. So the aim of this is to clarify and define terms, key concepts used in the context of your study. It means that when you are going to write a literature review, it is important and compulsory to provide some definitions. Some definitions of some key terms and, uh, of course, uh, keywords that appear in your title and of course the, uh, these keywords are key elements to your study. So for the first step you should define or provide definitions to the key concepts which exist in your study. Situate the topic within the historical background of your research area. It means that you are going to cite or give what uh, uh, here, a historical background of the existing knowledge research works in uh, the field that you are, uh, of course, uh, uh, exploring. Set up a theoretical framework for your study and contrast perspectives, ideas and approaches. So, we have seen that you should provide key definitions for keywords, provide an historical background, citing, Following what? Following, uh, of course, chronological order of events of uh, uh, here the events for, uh, uh, of course, the studies conducted in that field. For example, if we take the case of uh, feminism, the evolution of uh, the, the the feminist uh, movement until the creation of the feminist literary criticism, psychoanalysis is the same. So it means you are going to provide a historical background about the subject that you are going to explore. Set in what? A theoretical framework for your study and contrast. Set in a framework. Theoretical framework. So we've got historical background and theoretical framework about the given study. For example, uh, so this uh, video is uh, also set for uh, students in the field of didactics, not only for students uh, of, uh, in the field, uh, fields of civilization and uh, uh, literature. So, for example, if, if we cite here, uh, uh, here the emergence of theories that uh, talk or explore how to uh, listen, uh, speaking in anxiety in EFI classrooms. So, we, we have to provide what? We have to provide a theoretical framework of these approaches of theories. We are going to contrast the different scholars and present different approaches that they provide and uh, you contrast and compare, uh, compare sorry, their ideas. Recognizing influential researchers and scholars and similar studies that have shaped your field of study means that we are going to shed light on the most important scholars, uh, uh, individual scholars, researchers uh, who have conducted the uh, studies in that field of research. Place the topic within contemporary context and demonstrate knowledge of uh, state of the art developments. And of course, Discussing can debates, controversies, and questions. Questions that uh, researchers and scholars impose, uh, or uh, the last studies uh, impose in the field, Identif identifying relationships between ideas and theories and their practical implications. For this reason, writing the literature review is, a, is the most difficult part in whether you are writing a, the a doctoral thesis or a master or a magister dissertation. Let us now move on to the second, which is purposes that inform the research design methodology. So among the steps, or what is included in this title, so we have to narrow the research problem. Again, we have to return uh, to the research problem. For what reason? To make it visible within your context, shedding light on the research problem as we have seen in writing the introduction of the first chapter, the introduction of the first chapter, it means that the first chapter, writing the literature review, 
we should what shed light on the research problem within the background of the introduction and here you should remind the reader about what about the importance of your research problem and narrow as you can the research problem refine the focus of your study or even modify the topic of your research identify and critic methodological exceptions and research techniques employed in previous studies so we find the focus of uh, here sometimes you can modify in your uh, the topic of your research with a literature review identify and critic methodological exceptions and research techniques employed in previous studies so through uh, this stage it means that uh, informing the research design methodology so research design methodology we are not talking about the whole dissertation but chapter the first chapter which is the literature review you should give what an overview about the research design methodology of that chapter it means that the literature review uh, this does not mean that you are going to give an outline of the chapter but you are going to give you you are going to identify criticize contrast and compare uh, methodological assumptions research techniques uh, approaches theories used by previous scholars for what reason to show the research gap and cover methodologies and instrumentation that may help you design your own study and develop your data collection analysis strategies in the third chapter so in cover methodologies you can even talk about methods or methodologies instruments instrumentation in general used by previous scholars through these uh, showing these uh, methodologies you can you can create your own method method that you are going to use for data collection and analysis strategies highlighting deficiencies in previous research that may help you avoid similar flaws and errors you should also highlight what deficiencies problems in some methods, approaches, uh, views uh, of some scholars for what reason? In order to avoid falling in the same uh, mistakes or errors uh, used or conducted by those, those scholars. And I'm uh, insisting on what HAC 1999 called researchability. Confirm the researchability of your research question. So in your uh, in selecting, collecting uh, primary and secondary sources for your, uh, of course, the literature review, you are going to confirm to the reader the searchability of your research question. If you haven't uh, found any uh, available sources or um, important sources uh, or uh, here uh, these sources uh, limit your topic to the literature review it means that your topic is not searchable so in your uh, first chapter which is the literature review once you confirm the, the searchability of the research question as half 1999 put it ensure avoidness of insignificant research so here uh, you are going to limit uh, your research or your scholarship to the most important theories approaches and scholars let us now move on to the last one which is purposes that identify areas for advancing scholarship in the field so in this uh, title we should include or we should take into consideration the following points summarizing existing research in ways that allow new perspectives or interpre interpretations to emerge so you are not going to take all the literature you find in books and articles magazine magazines databases etc you are going to summarize so as we have seen the techniques you summarize and you synthesize you are not going to describe you are going to uh, here to focus on these two you summarize the existing research in ways that allow new perspectives or interpretations so through 
summarizing, we are going to give the reader an overview about new interpretations for that field of research or um, for uh, after getting the findings uh, through applying these theories, we are going to uh, provide new interpretations for uh, the given situation. Justifying the significance of your investigation by establishing the importance of the issue your research is addressing. So at the same uh, time, you are doing what to give to 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 to, uh, to strengthen your position through uh, here providing an overview about the significance of your investigation. So the significance of research is should be mentioned in the abstract. It should be mentioned in the general introduction, and it should be mentioned also mentioned in what in your literature review. Pointing out gaps in existing uh, in research and illustrating areas of concern or omissions that still needs need to be sorry to be explored. So we're going to uh, eliminate, uh, of course, all the studies or all the findings or all the, the arguments that need more exploration and limit it to uh, the existing knowledge in the field and showing the literary gap that you are going to find solutions for uh, this literary gap. Demonstrating how your research is linked to the studies reviewed and the existing body of knowledge. So through presenting all the scholarship, you should also share that your research is linked to a given uh, or to a set of studies, theories, uh, statistics, approaches existing in that field that you are exploring. Uh, at the same time, indicating how your research revises, extends, or refines the understanding and knowledge of the topic. So you're, uh, through writing the literature review, you are going to not decide and not to describe. I'm going to summarize, synthesize, and revise at the same time what existing knowledge to provide what uh, more understanding of the topic, of the approaches, and of course, of uh, here, the field itself. Now we move on to building your book shelf. What is meant by building your bookshelf? So through uh, here, of course, providing, uh, through reading, of course, uh, the first step in uh, writing the literature review, I'm not going to write the literature review directly, you are going to read. The first step is reading. You read. You start, for example, with reading articles, books, uh, data, uh, taking articles from databases, uh, reading encyclopedias, reading um, uh, different sources. Uh, after that, you are going to limit these sources to create your own bookshelf. So, provide an understanding of the background of the study through this uh, limiting your uh, references and identifying which studies are important and which are not. So, of course, you are going to take the most important uh, and beneficial studies to your, uh, of course, field of research. I'm not going to take all scholarship, all, uh, all approaches and methods, but you are going to restrict to the most important. What is included in the literature review? Of course, you are going to include, as uh, I said, a historical background. As we have said in the first purpose. A historical background of past and present research. Current debates and questions raised by uh, scholars concerning the subject so that to guide your reader to add to the literary gap and the relevant theories to the field. It means that historical re review or view on the topic debates questions to be raised to identify the literary gap and provide what relevant theories is here. Any study can't be conducted without theories and approaches and even in, for the field of uh, civilization uh, in which most of our students are facing some problems 
they said that we haven't theories that support our study to write a dissertation or a thesis in the field of civilization, but indeed there are approaches and theories that you can follow to write your, um, your dissertation. Now we move on to different types of literature reviews. Starting with journal studies. So we've got here uh, literature reviews for articles and we have seen in previous sessions what is meant by an article and uh, about the structure of the article. It should contain, was, uh, uh, of course, an abstract, an introduction and the introduction. It should, it, it, we should have a background of the study, uh, the focus, the significance of the study, the research questions and hypotheses. And this differs from one journal to another depending on the journal guidelines. We've got dissertation and thesis. So we say here, um, uh, I want to uh, raise uh, our students' attention to the both uh, terms that we are using. So I have read recently about the, the two uh, terms and I found that uh, we use the term thesis when we are writing a master Thesis, not a, a doctoral thesis. We say a master thesis and a doctoral dissertation. Uh, it is not like uh, we used to now as master dissertation or magister dissertation and uh, doctoral thesis. It is the opposite. It is master thesis and doctoral uh, dissertation. And of course, uh, here there are some differences between them. I'm going to see uh, that later on. We've got literature analysis. Or, and we've got course assignments. Let us start with the first one, which is journal studies. Of course, writing the literature review for a journal is not like writing the literature review for a thesis or dissertation. So for uh, in, about writing literature review uh, for a, a journal article. So the most important part for uh, here, uh, the literature review, of course it is not like the literature review uh, of uh, here, uh, dissertation or thesis. It is uh, shorter in comparison to that. It depends on uh, here the length of the article and the study being conducted. So among the most important point that we should include for uh, here uh, the li literature review of a journal article, introduce your research related to your research topic, shorter review of the existing literature, narrowing the scope and supporting existing Matters. So a summary. Uh, so we are going to summarize. Uh, of course, most of scholarship of uh, that field of research, uh, and, and of course, limiting these scholar, uh, scholar, scholarly works into the most important. And of course, you are going to to introduce or relate your research topic with those. Uh, here scholarship and in here the literature review of an article starts like literature review of thesis or dissertation with what an introduction with the body and with what a conclusion it is like writing uh, an essay uh, it has an introduction a body and of course a conclusion we should here provide what a shorter review of the existing literature. We are not going to, to, to include all the scholar, uh, scholarly works that the most important. Uh, you should narrow the scope. So the scope for writing the literature, a review or writing the thesis uh, or a dissertation is not like the scope of writing uh, here an article uh, to be published in a journal and supporting existing methods. You are going to support your uh, views or what you have uh, brought with the existing methods. So let us see now how to write or uh, about the structure in general. So uh, here we are going to give a new interpretation of 
uh, all the materials are combined and used with our interpretations. So in writing, this is what is uh, here the difference. The difference. Uh, of course, in uh, dissertation we are writing, I'm going to start with the new uh, interpretations, move into the old one. For uh, here, uh, of course, uh, the literature review of uh, an article, you are going to provide here uh, following chronological order from the old to the new one. Trace the intellectual progress of the field, including major debates. Evaluate the sources and advise the reader uh, on the most pertinent or relevant research. In the conclusion of the literature review, identify where gaps exist. Now, it is not like uh, here writing, uh, of course, the literature review of uh, theses. So we have seen uh, in previous sessions how to write the introduction. Uh, our first chapter, which is the literature review, and how to write uh, the conclusion uh, of that chapter. And in here, uh, you are not going to mention the literary gap in the conclusion in comparison to the literature review of an article. So as you can see here in this uh, diagram, so we are going to move from general to specific, providing what? Topic background supporting studies, the most important one. As you can see here, and we, here we are following what is called the funnel approach. Uh, introduction, you move from the general introduction, then the scope and structure, then uh, providing categories of research, categories of studies which are uh, closer to your, uh, here, your study, presenting the, your hypothesis statement and what uh, shed a light on the literary gap in what in the conclusion. Let us now move on to sources. Sources, and as you can see here, sources uh, are, uh, can be scholarly articles, can be books, can be dissertation theses, can be conference papers or conference, proce conference proceedings and they are called secondary sources. So, in here there are three types of sources. If we dig deeper on uh, how to write a literature review and how to select uh, different sources, we should come across uh, the different types of sources. So, secondary sources. What is meant by secondary sources? What is meant by First sources, we have seen that in one uh, in uh, previous uh, sessions. So what is meant by primary and secondary sources? We have seen that in one session. And in, in addition to that, we've got what is called tertiary sources. So what is meant by primary sources? So primary sources are first-hand accounts and reports written by the researchers who conducted the study.